What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about a way to use Fredo 6's extensions in order to quickly generate a trust structure in SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this is a trick I've seen floating around for a while, and I wanted to make a quick video on it. Um, so basically what you're gonna need is you're gonna need the extensions curve aloft and joint push pull, which are basically contained inside of Fredo 6's bundle. So I think that whole bundle is like $40 or something like that. I'm not aware of a tool that's free that would allow you to do something like this. But what we wanna do is we wanna start, and I'm just gonna tap the R key, and I'm just going to create a face real quick so that I can draw a curve. And so what I wanna do with the curve is I just wanna draw an arc that's kinda of like this, and I'm just gonna use that as something um, that I can use in order to generate like a skin. So I might take it and scale it up a little bit. So we'll go ahead and go with this for right now. And I'm gonna use the move tool in copy mode to move it over. And then I'm gonna flip it in place using the scale tool and I'm gonna move it back like this. So what we've got, right, is we've, we've basically got um, a frame that we're gonna use in order to generate our skin. So I'm gonna tap the M key and use the move tool in copy mode in order to move it out. I'm gonna scale this up a little bit and probably out a little bit as well. And then I'm gonna take this and use the move tool in copy mode over here and I'm going to move that out. And so basically what I have now is I have a frame and I wanna take this whole frame, select it, and I wanna use curve aloft in order to loft it. So when I click on loft by spline, what this is gonna do is this is gonna generate a surface that's in here. Now remember that the spacing of the mesh that's created is also going to be very similar to the spacing of the truss that you create. So you can come in here and you can adjust the size of your segments in here by creating the number or adjusting the number of segments. Now I can't remember, yeah, you can add some additional detail in here using this interpolate function if you decide that you wanna do that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it as is for right now. But basically what this is going to do, and I'm gonna go ahead and click in order to set this, is this is going to create a skin. This skin is basically the shape of the tensile structure that I want to create. Now, what I wanna do from here is I wanna give this a little bit of thickness, right? And this is something we've talked about before, but if we go to joint push pull right here, and we wanna go ahead and set this to thicken, we can use this in order to um, push pull this object out. Now, notice I'm getting all these edges in here. I don't necessarily want that. What I wanna do instead is I wanna make sure that I've set my borders to contour. And what that's gonna do is that's just gonna allow me to give this some thickness. So say I want this to be six inches thick. I can um, type that value in and then go ahead and click in order to set that. Um, I do usually set this to generate as a group so that I don't have to worry about all this geometry merging together. And so that's created this group in here. And if I double click in here, remember that I can select this singular face like this. And so what I wanna do now is I wanna generate my framework. And so in order to generate my framework, what I wanna do is I wanna use joint push pull like this. But in this case, remember that we wanna set our border to grid, not to contour. Because remember how before that created all those extra edges that we didn't want? Well, now we do want them. And so notice what I can do is I can click and I can move my mouse like this in order to set the thickness of whatever I think, uh, I think that framework is going to be. And so it's gonna look something like this. Now, the one thing I wanna do is I don't really want this going down below my object like this. So what I can do is I can come in here and I can adjust the molding setting. And so when I set that molding setting, notice how this is kind of flattening out right here. And I will say this isn't a super precise way to create something like this. Um, we're more just going for the visual is what we're doing. But what we want this to do is we want this to generate our borders as a grid because we want it to generate all of these lines. And I want to go ahead and I want to click in order to generate this. Make sure that you set this as its own group like this. So I'm going to click and that's going to generate an object with um, all of those edges inside of it. Now, one thing that I do, you don't necessarily have to do this, is this is really turning into a whole bunch of like nested geometry, right? So if I click in here, there's like groups inside of groups inside of groups before I can finally get into this object. Usually what I'll do is I'll do a control X to cut this group and then I'll go outside of this whole thing and do an edit paste in place so that this geometry is separate from this geometry right here. And we're gonna go ahead and right click on this and hide it. 
And so notice what we have in here is we have a surface that's been generated, but I don't really want this whole thing. What I want instead is I want just the edges. And so the way that I can do that is I'm gonna use an extension called Selection Toys from TomTom, Tom, which is free and you can download it inside of the SketchUp extension warehouse. And basically what it does is it allows you to come in here and select a whole object like this one, but you can right click and there's an option here for select only. Well, in this case, I want to select only the faces that are in here and I want to hit the delete key. And so when I hit the delete key, what that does is that removes all of the faces that are in here. And one thing that you might know, and I don't really care for what we're doing here, but you might notice how some of these faces got generated flat and they don't have this diagonal geometry that's in here. So if you did want everything to be 100% uniform when we do this, you might need to come in here and just draw in some extra faces. I'm not gonna worry, or some extra edges. I'm not really gonna worry too much about it for this exercise, but you could do that if you wanted to. So I'm gonna do a select only faces. I'm gonna delete those out. But now what I've got in here is I've basically got the framework for the, um, for the structure that I wanna create, right? So this whole framework is in here. Well, what I wanna do is I'm gonna use another extension called Lines to Tubes. You can download Lines to Tubes at the link in the notes down below. Um, but basically what that is, is that's a tool that you can find in the Sketchication Extension Warehouse and it allows you to select some edges. So say like these right here, and it adds a function to convert those to cylinders. So if I was to do this, I'm gonna click on okay. What that's gonna do is that's going to basically use those edges in order to create a tube, right? So we're gonna do that for this whole thing. And one thing I do recommend that you do is I do recommend that you save before you do this because this is gonna generate a lot of tubes and a lot of geometry. So once you've done that, I'm just gonna come in here and I'm just gonna do a control A like this. And I'm gonna go to tools convert arc circles, lines to cylinders. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set these to a diameter of one. I'm gonna say yes to create a group, no to each tube is a group. And I'm gonna set the precision to, we can leave it at eight. If this generates a ton of geometry and your computer can't handle it, you might knock that down to like five or six. But I'm gonna go ahead and click on okay. And it's gonna give you a little bar at the bottom of the page showing you the status. So I'm gonna let this work for a little while. Um, it's probably gonna take a minute or two for it to generate all of these tubes, but then we can look at the final result. All right, so when you're done, it's going to look something like this. And remember that we did generate a number of different tubes in here, but I've basically generated this truss structure. And so if you did want to see this a little better, you could go into your styles and add profiles in here like this. Notice how when you do add profiles, that is a lot more geometry that this is going to have to display. So it might slow down your SketchUp model a little bit. You might also toggle some shadows on um, and you can use the shadows in order to add a little bit more visual to this. Um, you could also do an edit on hide all. And remember that now we've got this surface on top of this scaffold structure as well. All right, so that's where I'm in this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions about this. If you want to learn about some more great SketchUp extensions, I'm going to link to an extension guide that I've put together on this page as well. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.